Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Pole Position Podcast by FPSSquared.com. It is Friday, May 11th, 2018, and we are going to be going over, reviewing, and talking about the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Alright, so uh, before we get into the race, I figure we could go over some news here. Um, the main thing, really the exciting thing today, uh, well really not today, uh, yesterday or the day before, I don't know, I'm recording this on Thursday, but whatever, uh, F1 TV launched, um, Formula One's subscription-based um, archive and live streaming service uh, launched. Um, and I went ahead and subscribed. It's only $12 a month. I would recommend, you know, if you need a legal way to watch the Formula One races and you're in one of the supported countries, um, it's a pretty damn cheap way and pretty good way to watch Formula One races. Um, I would recommend it, certainly. There are, uh, there are a few kinks, you know, maybe if you do care about some things, maybe it's not quite time to cancel your cable subscription yet. But, um... I, I think it's pretty good, uh, and I think that the kinks will be worked out, you know, within the next couple of races at the very least. So I'm just going to go ahead and deal with it because I am sick of paying for cable. I am done. The only reason I pay $40 a month for my Hulu cable bullcrap is for Formula One. I pay $40 a month for Formula One, um, so I'm going to stop doing that. It's just it's worth it to me to... the to sacrifice a few of the things that you have to with F1 TV. Um, because it's just so much cheaper. But uh, having said that, a few of the things you do have to sacrifice, uh, some of the things they haven't worked out yet, um, it lets you um, pick the audio track that you want to listen to. You can either listen to the race sounds, it's labeled as FX, um, you know, all the ra basically, whenever you watch Formula One broadcast, there's like the main feed that actually comes from the, the track, the Formula One producers themselves, and that's what gets beamed to all the um, different broadcasters, and then they just talk over that feed. And so what the FX basically is, is just that raw Formula One produced feed without any commentary. Um, but then they do also have an option for different commentaries uh, in all sorts of different languages here. Um, obviously the one I am concerned with is English, but let's see. I can, let me pull up the, I'm on it right now, so let me pull up the race replay here. And just, let's see. So they have English, Oh, let me turn that down. They have English, German, French, and Spanish. So, certainly, I'm no linguist, 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 I'm no expert in language, but um, I'm going to say that covers a pretty good, pretty vast majority of the world. Um, so yeah, anyway, you can pick either FX, which is just the track sounds and the car sounds and the raw F1 feeds like the team radio, things like that, or you can pick those commentary channels, uh, in the language of your choosing. But unfortunately, if you do pick some, if you do pick one of the commentary channels, it is not, it doesn't have the effect. Uh, effects from the track and the team radio and everything coming through as well. So if you pick one of those commentaries, it is just the raw feed from the broadcaster. So real quick, I guess, just to play a quick snippet. This is from the Chinese Grand Prix. And now it is, it's going to be, it, it's not a direct file. You're going to hear some echo and stuff probably because I'm just playing it from my computer. But like I've selected English commentary and I'm going to press play. So you can hear the sky guys talking, but it is hard to notice, I'm sure. But you can't, 
hear, if you listen closely, you can't hear the cars or the sounds from the track. So just real quick again. Notice you don't hear any engine sounds or any team radio if it was coming through. Nothing. You hear nothing from the track. You hear just the commentator. So it's a bit weird, honestly. It's a bit it's a little disappointing, but again, it's twelve dollars a month and they're gonna get this stuff fixed. So I say right now it's still worth it. Um one of the other things I was reading on the subreddit, the Formula One subreddit, let's see if I can find the particular comment. Um, I have seen a few people complain about like stuttering. I haven't had any issues with, and I don't have good internet. I have DSL, live in a rural area. Um, I haven't had any issues with it, but um, I have seen people on the subreddit complain about stuttering, like when they're when the video's playing, it will freeze up or have to buffer or things like that. Um, but I haven't had any of that kind of experience with it. Um, this guy was the guy I was looking for. He says the German audio is actually useless. I can't wait for Liberty to employ something better than that. They just put the RTL audio track in with ad breaks and all. So I imagine he means that they put the German broadcasters just raw commentary in there and they didn't even bother to cut out the ad breaks. See, like, you can hear TV commercials as well. So, yeah, there's a few kinks. Um, something else that is a bit disappointing is that it's not in 50 frames per second. Um, somebody on Reddit, and, I mean, I can see it, too. I can tell the difference between 50 and 30 frames a second. It's definitely not 50. Um, but someone on Reddit says it's, like, 25 to 30, 25 for... The onboards, I believe he said. I don't know. I, I can't verify any of that anyway. But I can tell you definitely it's not the 50 frames per second. Um, and then, um, you know, that that's basically the, the bad things about it. Um, some people think that it's still better to torrent. I I don't think so. I personally like to do things the legal way, the fair way. You know, I think $12 is a reasonable price for the service. Uh, you know, I've talked about the bad. The good is that you're going to get every single race, every single uh, replay of a race, if you can't watch it live, but you can watch every race live. You can watch replays of the race. They have an archive that supposedly they will add to that is something else if you're in it for archive there's not a whole lot to watch in terms of like old seasons um seems like it's pretty sparse honestly in terms of you know things from the 80s and 90s um but you know i really to be honest i don't care about that that much you get all the races live uh you get mo every driver has an onboard camera that you can just seamlessly switch to while you're watching the race or a replay they and yes they even keep vods um of the drivers of the driver cams so you can while you're watching a replay of a race switch to the driver's views so that's all really cool um you know i think people are being a bit hard on it but at the same time it is needed because these are issues but honestly it's it's all going to get fixed um you know i have faith in formula one and liberty they've been doing a great job so far this year so i i i would say it's worth it and that people should go ahead and subscribe to it okay so moving on from formula one tv let's get into just a few more pieces of news here before we get on to the race Miami um, is meeting with Liberty Media. The city of Miami is meeting with Liberty Media uh, in discussions about a possible Miami Grand Prix, which, quite frankly, would be incredible. Um, this is from thedrive.com. 
They say Miami City Commission is expected to meet to reach a verdict on Thursday over whether or not Formula One will race the city streets. If agreed on, the deal with the sports commercial rights holder Liberty Media would guarantee a Grand Prix in the city for a decade. So for 10 years, they would have a race in Miami, and their first race, it says, would be in October of 2019. Um, looks like they go on to say that a um, member of the city commission, Ken Russell, published an image of a proposed route, a conceptual route for the race. Um, and what is known is that the circuit design encircles the American Airlines Arena, side of the Miami Heat NBA team, crosses the Port Boulevard Bridge, elevated above Biscayne Bay. I'm sorry if I'm not saying that right. I'm sure I'm not. I'm not familiar with the Miami area. So forgive me. And I'm also terrible at reading. Um, so again, forgive me. Um, and then takes a chunk from the end of Biscayne Boulevard for a total length of 2.57 miles. Um, so again, all this is proposed. I will link an article to the story uh, in the um, article below or on the website on fpssquared.com. Um, and you guys can go to it and check it out for yourself. It looks like it would be absolutely sick. Um, there's just this huge straightaway. It is just enormous going across the bridge and into... Uh, that looks like an island, I guess. I don't, I don't know, though. But um, just this huge straightaway. And then straight into a sharp hairpin and then they go right back across for another straightaway that's even longer um that seems really cool and then it kind of um becomes a bit more i mean that looks like a if i'm gonna be honest that looks like a ding dong uh, it goes into what looks to be uh, male genitalia and then circles american airlines arena and then an extremely sharp turn um, back onto the straightaway. Uh, I'm terrible at explaining it. You just you really need to check out the tweet in particular. I'll also link that separately from the article in the uh, notes below. But yeah, that'd be that would certainly be an awesome track. Um, it'd be cool to have two. U.S. Grand Prix. I don't know what they... I guess they would just call this the Miami Grand Prix, or maybe... I don't know. They could do the whole US, Eastern United States Grand Prix, Western United States Grand Prix in Austin thing. I don't know how they would do it, but it would be really cool uh, regardless. Um, I think that... I mean, it's just my personal opinion that you have to... If you're in Miami and you're having a race, you got to do it at night. And that's my opinion, and there needs to be uh, neon and palm trees everywhere. But I don't know. That's just my, my personal opinion. Uh, I think that it would be a really cool track. I mean, it would just be really neat. All right, that's uh, going to do it for the news. Uh, let's get into the Azerbaijan uh, Grand Prix, the top stories uh, from that race. So let's start with kind of um, the the main story, what everyone was talking about when the race ended. Um, Red Bull and Ricardo and Verstappen. So uh, Verstappen and Ricardo were throughout the entire race. Um, let's see, I believe they start like around like as soon as the first. Um, safety car is done with um la around lap five or six verstappen and ricardo start going at it and 
And, um, you know, we were kind of... Anybody watching that could tell that it was probably going to end up badly. There were enough times that... There were two or three times that they were just going at it so hard and nothing happened. That It was, it was really exciting and I was kind of getting less and less from the edge of my seat, you know, just kind of relaxing a bit. Like, okay, maybe they're just racing really hard and nothing's going to come of it. But then, then on lap 40... Ricardo goes for the old switcheroo. Uh, he goes to the right of Verstappen, I believe. Um, but he, he's not he's not committing like he's doing. He's going to go right and then go left. So he goes right to kind of fool Verstappen into following him that way to block the pass. And then as he sees that Verstappen has took the bait and is going right, he dives into the left to pass Verstappen. But the thing is, Verstappen <laughs> turns to the left and blocks him again. And uh, Ricardo ends up... I mean, Ricardo has fully committed into passing him on the left, and Max has given him no room whatsoever. He turns right back into Ricardo again, or back into his way again to block him from passing, and Ricardo just doesn't have the time. It just it's it would be impossible for Ricardo to stop. Ricardo ends up locking up the wheels and running right into the back of Verstappen, and both Red Bulls are out of the race. Now there was, of course, this sparked a huge um, debate on Max Verstappen and his at least on the subreddit it did, and it seemed to in just general F1 culture. Um, sparked a huge debate on Verstappen and whether or not he is, uh, you know, dangerous, if he should get in trouble, because a lot of people, to the way that looked to a lot of people is not only did, it's pretty clear in F1, well, in the rules of racing just in general, that if someone is trying to pass you, you can block one time, but you're not allowed to just swerve left and right, left and right, left and right, and never allow someone to pass. If they have the pace and the ability to pass you, you get one shot to block them, basically. Um, you get one chance to stop them from doing it. And if you can't shake them, then there's you're not allowed to move again. You have to let them pass. So when Verstappen went and moved to the right, when Ricardo was tricking him, that was supposed to be the only move that he was supposed to make, in a lot of people's opinion. Uh, well, and really, to be honest, it is just objectively the rule. Um, and whenever Ricardo went to the left, and he swerved to the left, it is of a lot of people's opinion, including mine, that that was a deliberate second block, and that Verstappen should be reprimanded for that. Um... And then there's also the whole issue of you're not supposed to do that in a braking zone anyway. So there's kind of two rules. He was in a braking zone, and he blocked a pass. Um, and he was also blocking a pass multiple times, more than once. So I, I don't know so much about the braking zone. Um, it, honestly, it's not even needed. In my opinion, uh, he objectively swerved to avoid being passed and there's one it, it's one thing to do that once that's fine but you can't do that again it's clear in the rules so I do think that honestly it was objectively uh, an illegal move by Verstappen but regardless of what I think and what people think there were no consequences for his actions um, in fact you know, it seems like Ricardo and Verstappen, I, I don't know 100% if they're happy with each other, but they seem to at least be, were okay with the incident having taken place. I mean, obviously they weren't happy about it, but they didn't seem like angry at each other. They didn't act like they wanted to, to fight or they, they weren't angry at each other. At the end of the day, they are still teammates, and they seem to still be getting along even after that. Um, 
Christian Horner, on the other hand, seemed very upset. He, um, the Sky feed that I was watching on ESPN, uh, they had an interview down there, and they were trying to get, after the incident, they were trying to get Christian Horner to talk about it. And Christian Horner just was very straight-faced, very stern, was walking to the the briefing room, I guess, where he and the drivers were going to meet and talk. And just very stern, didn't say hardly anything. They were asking, well, do you have any comment? He's like, I don't want to make a comment until I've spoken to both the drivers. And that's basically all he said. He was very straight-faced, was very looked very angry, in my opinion, about the situation. And was walking with um, walking with conviction to that briefing room where I'm sure that both Ricardo and Verstappen got a stern lecture. Um, and in fact, it came out later on that Verstappen and Ricardo both are to go to the Red Bull factory and apologize to all of the employees. So, yeah, I mean... It's pretty straightforward to me. I think Verstappen should be reprimanded more than he has for the situation. I don't think Ricardo really is to blame at all, and I don't think that Ricardo, other than yes, they were he was racing his teammate, um, and maybe perhaps from Red Bull's perspective, that's not you know the best thing for your drivers to be doing is racing each other as hard as they were, but. Other than that, Ricardo, I don't think, really did anything wrong. I think Ricardo was was given a bad deal, honestly. He was handed a bad hand. Um, he was given a bad hand. What's the, you know, the poker saying? But anyway, he, he was unlucky, in my opinion. Uh, now, having said that uh, about Verstappen... Uh, yes, he should have been reprimanded. I don't think it's quite as extreme as what some people are saying. You know, I don't think he is some super dangerous person. I, I still don't, I'm still not quite there yet, you know, although I have to say this season, he's had a lot of incidents. But uh, you, that's kind of the appeal of Max Verstappen, is that, yes, he goes for things that, sometimes don't exist, and yes, he is aggressive when he shouldn't be, but that makes damn good racing. That's fun to watch, it's exciting to watch, and I don't think it's overly dangerous. You know, he's had the equivalent of fender benders in Formula One. There hasn't, you know, he's not done anything insane, uh, you know, so... I don't think he is overly dangerous right now. Um, is there a potential for him to cause some big wreck? Yes, I, I suppose. But I don't think that that's going to happen. At the very most, what he seems to do is, you know, he goes for things that aren't there. So, you know, he's going to hit somebody in the side and spin them out. Or, you know, he's going to get rear-ended, which, you know, honestly, this was the worst race that he's been involved in. This seemed like the most dangerous one. Um, and, I mean, both drivers walked away fine, so, you know, let's not talk about what could have happened anyway. What did happen is what's important. Uh, both drivers are okay, perhaps a little upset at the um, consequences of their actions, but they're fine. Uh, so I don't think we're quite at the point yet where we could say Max Verstappen is a danger to other drivers, personally. I, I think, honestly, if anything, he's good for the sport. He makes for exciting races. Um, and he's fun to watch. And I do honestly believe once he does refine his skills and once he gets a little bit of that young eagerness out of him, that he's going to be really something. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Obviously, he's not hes not making his team happy. And he's not making his fans happy by wrecking. But he's making me hella happy watching him do some of this crazy stuff that he does. So, I think people need to lay off for Stappen. He's just a bit young and too hungry. But once he gets a clear focus, 
he he is he's champion material in my opinion. He's going to be world champion one day. Uh, let's see. Now for just uh, before we get into any more major stuff, just a little side story. Um, Romain Grosjean during one of the safety cars. <laughs> During one of the safety cars is warming up his tires. You know, they're going, you know, he's he's um, swerving left to right to warm up the tires. And he actually ends up in the wall. Um, so somehow, you know, I just wanted to mention that, that that's got to suck. I feel really bad for Romain Grosjean. He seems like a really good person. Um, but just some of the some bad luck this year. Honestly, I guess you wouldn't really chalk that down to luck, but you know, I mean, that could that could happen to some of the best of them, honestly. So people were kind of laying into him too, but I think you know it's not that big of a deal. It just does suck. Uh, it's unfortunate from from his perspective, obviously. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, Romain Grosjean did manage to wreck under a safety car while trying to warm up his tires. All right, so the second biggest story from the Azerbaijan Grand Prix was is probably the fact that Botas uh, didn't win. Um, Botas was... I mean, it was looking like Botas was going to win. Um, and then on lap 49, on lap 49, I believe it was only a 51-52 lap race, uh, he has ran across some debris and his tire punctures. Um, and unfortunately, it retires him from the race. I don't really have a lot to say about this. You know, it's it's very unfortunate for him. You know, he seems to run into bad luck in general, um, especially for being on the Mercedes team. He really just seems to... He's had a stroke of bad luck recently. Um but yeah, it was just it was unfortunate. There were some pictures of him just in uh, just in like almost fetal positions on the side of the track. He's just in shock that it has happened. Uh, I was in shock that it had happened. It was just really unfortunate. Even Lewis Hamilton who does go on to win the race, Lewis Hamilton said that I mean, he wasn't very happy. He wasn't like his chipper uh self. He was a bit unfortunate. He was a bit, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, he just was kind of was down and out, honestly, even though he had won. Um, he wasn't. I mean, he was happy that he had won, but he just wasn't as happy as he normally was. And he even said, you know, this was uh, Valtteri's win today. So that's unfortunate, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, just unfortunate luck. Um, Botas was out of the race. Not really much to say about that. It was just an unfortunate incident. That's racing, though. Um, so, yeah. Um, probably the last thing I'm going to talk about, um, one of the bigger things that happened, uh, Sergio Perez made it to the podium. Uh, he got to third. Um, he looks like he passed Vettel uh, and made it into third. Uh, Vettel actually locked up. And went from, uh, you know, Vettel was in second and he was going for the win. Honestly, I, you know, listen to me, I'm going to say uh, if I was a Formula One driver, I wouldn't have. Um, but he did. He was going for first um, and he just pushed too hard on one of the turns. It uh, looks like turn one. Um, went wide. He, or he, well, he pushed too hard. He locked the brakes, went wide, and went from second down to fourth. Uh, and Perez is the person that passed him for third. And Perez kept that position and ended up getting a podium. Um, which, let's see, looking through here, um, it, do, it does remind me that there was a story um, about uh, uh, Perez's podium being in jeopardy because of some DRS issues. Uh, there were some DRS issues during this race where the uh, signal wouldn't come into the drivers, so they had to manually activate DRS, and there was maybe some... There was some um, accusations made by some of the drivers that 
Perez uh, used his DRS early or not in the zones, or he didn't use his DRS correctly. Um, so they looked into it, and as far as as of today of this recording, which I'm actually recording this on Thursday, May the 10th, um, Sergio Perez still is listed as being third, so I guess nothing ever came of it. But there was um, some accusations and... Uh, a little investigation into into that, but um, yeah, that's pretty much the that's pretty much all that happened in the Azerbaijan <laughs> Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Uh, it was actually a pretty good race. Um, Azerbaijan's one of my favorite circuits. Uh, you know, it's not Monaco, but it certainly reminds one of Monaco with the street race for one, and then like the European architecture the the cool like they're going through um a street with like apartment buildings and people on their balconies watching the race that's very monaco-esque um and then it's just cool like that one narrow part of the track i can't remember what turn it is right before a freaking castle it's a really cool track just in terms of scenery and then it's also i mean the last two years have made for an entertaining race um there's a lot of things that happened this year. If you haven't seen the race yet, which I'm sure you have if you're a Formula 1 fan, um, it's really good. It's definitely a good race. It, that that track gets a lot of shit, and I don't think that it should. You know, it's not 2016 anymore. The last two races have been very good. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Uh, just a few quick recaps. Um, podium... Uh, podiums here. Lewis Hamilton was first, Kimi Raikkonen second, and Sergio Perez third. And then rounding out the top five here, we've got Sebastian Vettel in fourth, and Carlos Sainz in fifth. So that is the top five for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Uh, championship standings. We'll just do the top ten here. Um... Drivers' Championship, Lewis Hamilton is in first after this race with 70 points. Sebastian Vettel is in a close second with 66. Third, Kimi Raikkonen with 48 points. Fourth, Valtteri Bottas with 40 points. Fifth, Daniel Ricciardo with 37 points. Sixth, Fernando Alonso with 28 points. Then, Nico Hulkenberg in seventh with 22 points. Max Verstappen in 8th with 18 points. Number 9 is Sergio Perez. No doubt this podium helped him get there with 15 points. And then rounding out the top 10, you have Carlos Sainz with 13 points. Again, no doubt helped by this race. Um, And then Constructors. So still leading the constructors is Ferrari with 114 points. Forza Ferrari, grazie, mamma mia. Number two is Mercedes with 110 points. Number three, Red Bull Racing, Tag Heuer Heuer with 55 points. They're a watch company, I guess. I don't know. Tag Heuer. Uh, number four, McLaren Renault with 36 points. Number five, Renault Works with 35 points. Six, Force India Mercedes with 16 points. Seven, Scuderia Toro Rosso Honda with 13 points. Eight, Haas Ferrari with 11. Nine, Sauber Ferrari with 10. And number 10 is Williams Mercedes with four. So that is your standings as of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And that is going to do it for me. This has been the Pole Position Podcast produced by FPSSquared.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next race.